Number 86. Calculate the equilibrium concentration of Ni2 plus in a 1.0 molar solution of NiNH36NO32. Okay. So in order for this question to work out, we did have to go into the back of the textbook or some charts to find out a KF value, so a formation constant, for some component of this ionic compound. Now, when I did look in the back of these, you know, the textbook to find out a KF value, I did find one for NiNH36 with a 2 plus. This, remember, anytime that you have a KF value, this is a complex ion. Now, complex ions, they're ions in general, so if you pair them off with another ion, technically you can make one big ionic compound, and that's what they did here. If we look here, I do see the NiNH36. This is the complex ion component, and they just added another ion, so together the whole thing is like one big ionic compound. But since the KF value is only for the cation, the positive charge, the complex ion, we only care about this, the uh, complex ion, in the whole entire um, ionic compound. Now, in order to break it up, remember, if we want to break up um, compounds into its parts, all we have to do is just look for the ratio. In this one whole compound, it looks like you only have one of the complex ion, right? There was no like two in front of here or three in front of here to say that I had two or three nickel NiNH36s. So in for every one whole of this, I can just say that I just have one NiNH36. And that complex ion has a plus two charge. It comes from, you know, looking at the KF values, but also you can use your um, subscripts as well. Remember, you could always crisscross those subscripts back up to get your charges. Okay, so if that's the case, if I started off with 1.0 molarity of the whole, uh, you know, ionic compound, and it's a one, to one relationship, that means that this is also 1.0 molarity, right? The molarities are the same, I just use my mole ratio. And now I'm gonna use this information with my KF value that I found in the back to find out that nickel uh, concentration. Now, in this case, we don't, you know, we could use a KD formula you know, or a KD value because we're starting off with the complex ion. But if you just keep it with the KF, you'll still get the same answer. So let's just do it that way. Remember, KF, F stands for formation. You're forming your complex ion from your two components. They did tell me the one component was the nickel, two plus, that's the Ni, right? So I'll start there. Ni, two plus. Now plus, well, it has to be the ammonia right? NH3. And this comes to equilibrium because we're still dealing with K values and, you know, you form your complex ion. Now, once I write th this out, I just have to make sure that, and maybe I'll put like two plus, it doesn't really matter if it's plus two or two plus tomato, tomato, right? Just make sure that your equation is balanced. I have six ammonias, so I have to put a six in front of here. And just know that all charges, as we've been seeing, all charged um, ions are always aqueous, and for your KFs, your ligand, your non-metal component, that's aqueous as well. Okay, so we have this. Now it seems like this was a starting amount. This was your initial concentration. And anytime that you have an initial concentration with any K value, you know what we're doing. We're doing an ice table. So I sit out, I-C-E, I stands for initial, right? The only thing that they told us was that we had a zero, a 1.0 molarity for my complex ion. So I'm just going to put 1.0. Did we start off with any of these? No. So zero and zero. Now you can only go up from here. So the change on the reactant side has to be plus and the change on the product side has to be minus. 
We don't know how much it's going to change, so we label it as x, and we use our coefficients. Keep in mind that there was only like one nickel here, so this would technically be plus 1x, but plus 1x and x is just the same as x. But you just have to be careful for this one, right? There's six nh 3 so I have to say plus 6x. There was only one here, so I will say minus x. And then equilibrium, you just tie the initials and the changes together. So zero plus x is just x, zero plus six x is six x, and 1.0 minus x is 1.0 minus x. And these are your values that are going to be going into your KF expression. So let's just pull this over to the side, because now that we have that going, we will, <coughs> um, I guess I could put it down here, doesn't really matter. Now let's write out our specific KF equation. So we have KF equals concentration of the products divided by the reactants. There's one product and two reactants. They're all um, aqueous. So we have Ni, NH3, 6 with the 2 plus. So concentration of that all divided by the nickel 2 plus times the concentration of the NH3, and that has to be raised to the sixth because you always raise it to the coefficients. All the ones that have the one in front, nobody cares that you raise the numbers, right? So now if I just say, okay, KF was 2.0 times 10 to the eighth. This was 1.0 minus X. We have X and we have 6X. Now, whenever you see that you have a number minus x, that means that you're going to have to do the quadratic equation if we don't assume. So we always like to assume first just to make sure that we can, you know, get rid of that minus x. And what we say is in our mind that since this KF is so large, that means at the end of the day, you should have roughly all products. But if you start off with all products and you're ending with mostly products, the drop here is going to be so small that you're not even going to see it. So we can say, I'm going to assume that this change isn't great, and I'm just going to put in 1.0. And then from there, we just do the 5% rule and just see, you know, hopefully we are correct. So let's see. 2.0 times 10 to the eighth equals, we basically have 1.0, right, divided by, Oh boy, this is going to be nuts. X times 6X to the 6th. So let's do 6X to the 6th, right? 6X to the 6th is basically if you had 6Xs and they were all times together. That's like the long way. But some students like to see it worked out just to kind of visualize it. So basically, you're timesing 6 by 6 times. So 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. <laughs> aka six cubed so six cubed or you know six six times is forty six thousand six hundred and fifty six and then you tie along as many x's that you have that's six of them so that just turns into x to the sixth so i'm just going to get rid of this pull this out make this centered and then this would be forty six thousand six hundred and 56 X to the sixth. We can basically pull together this one X value together, right? So I have one X, now it's X to the sixth. So I can say that this is this value, but now I have one more X, so that would be X to the seventh. Now I'm going to cross multiply. So this times this number, and then it would be equal to 1, right? So this would be equal to 1.0. And then let's see, this times one, uh, 2 times 10 to the 8th. I get 9.3312 times 10 to the 12th. And I just need a little bit more room because this would be now x to the 7th. So... Let's solve for x. We have to divide by 9.3312 times 10 to the 12th on both sides. Times 10 to the 12th. This will cancel. 
And now we have, and if I can maybe bring this up a little bit, there we go. Now I have x to the seventh equals, oh boy, one divided by that number. I get a long decimal. I'm going to try to just put as many as I can. 1.071674. That's good enough. Times 10 to the negative 13th. And now, if you want to get rid of something raised to the seventh, you have to take the seventh root. However, I don't know how to do that in the calculator. So what I like to do is I just like to raise it to the inverse of that number. So seven is basically seven over one. So if I just raise it to the one over seven, these values will cancel out, just leaving you with X. So I'm going to do the same over here. I'm just going to raise that number to the one over seven, and then we will get an X value. So 1.071674 times 10 to the negative 13th. I'm going to raise that to the one divided by seven. And looks like two sig figs. So 0 0.014, and that's molarity. Okay, now we just have to go back and answer the question, right? Now the question specifically said, calculate the equilibrium concentration of the nickel. So I go over to just the Ni2+, plus, and it looks like the nickel was just X. So if the nickel was just X, and the X was 0 0.014 formularity, I'm done. I don't have to do any multiplication. That's the end. So the nickel concentration is the 0 0.01 formularity, and we're done. Whoop, whoop. What'd you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope you guys are out there studying hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. I'm rooting for you guys, and I will talk to you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.